Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating quite an interesting concept from regression modeling, that is, ridge regression, developed by Hall and Cannard in the 1970s, and further refined by other researchers since. The purpose of the ridge regression is to make your estimation result robust to multicollinearity or non-orthogonality of independent variables. And we have got several videos that touch upon the topic of multicollinearity on the channel already, so check this out, for example, if you want to know about different multicollinearity tests. However, if you have established that your regressors are near multicollinear, or at least non-orthogonal, you might want to modify your regression technique so that your results are more robust to this assumption violation. And ridge regression is a very creative technique to do so. So first of all, let's recap what we have got over here. That is a very simple multiple regression case where we try and estimate production functions for a set of countries based on their real GDP population and capital stock. So basically we try to estimate the production function in terms of um, labor and capital. And here we regress the natural logarithm of real GDP onto a constant, natural logarithm of population in million people, and natural logarithm of capital stock in million dollars. And using OLS, we could uh, quite easily extract the results and interpret the coefficients as elasticities of the uh, production function onto particular factors. However, it is quite widely known that countries that have high populations might also have high capital stock. So you would have some correlation between those two independent variables. So it's quite obvious that your independent variable set might be not orthogonal. And to make your results more robust, you might want to apply rich regression to this particular case and compare your results to the original ones. By the way, the original tutorial that goes through how to estimate the OLS multiple regression, the baseline regression on the same data set is available on our channel over here. However, we are concerned with the ridge regression. And here is the mathematics of it compared to the OLS. Unlike uh, in OLS, where you've got the simple uh, inverse of the matrix multiplication result between transposed x and x, here, as this particular uh, product might be a multicollinear matrix or a near multicollinear matrix, if the regresses are very tightly correlated with each other, we add this particular bit to it on the right. That is k, which is a scalar, a number, some parameter, times the identity matrix. And the identity matrix is simply a matrix with unit diagonals and zero on every single other entry of the matrix of the dimension that is equal to the number of explanatory variables we have got in the model. And as in our model, we have got the constant, and uh, then we've got two additional variables. Our identity matrix needs to be of a dimension three. So let's put it over here. One, one, one on the diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. And now there are a number of ways on how to estimate K, but let's just start with eyeballing it. Most of the time you select K between zero and one, but the ridge regression works for any positive k. So here let's select a k of 0 0.5. Then we already can calculate the uh, estimator for the regression parameters based on this value of k, so let's do that. Over here we'll calculate the coefficients for the ridge regression using this technique over here, and we'll be able to compare them with the OLS result straight away. So we select the array where our coefficients would appear, and we start inputting the formula that's described mathematically over here, and start translating it into the language of Excel. So we start in a pretty familiar way, just as we would have done for a OLS regression. We do matrix multiplication of an inverse matrix, M inverse, and we start inputting the multiplication result of a transposed X matrix, so the matrix of independent variables, including the constant here, so it would be a 3 by 180 matrix. 
and then we input the non-transposed variant of the same matrix to the right hand side and here when you close the mult parentheses we would have closed the inverse parentheses if we were dealing with OLS, isn't it? But here we need to adjust it and add K times the identity matrix that we've just specified. And this is the key, that's the center point, the conceptual idea of the ridge regression. If our XT times X matrix is non-orthogonal or near multicollinear, if you add to it something that is orthogonal or non-multicollinear by design and an identity matrix is of course such, you will be able to estimate your parameters, your coefficients with bias, but with much less noise, much less variance. And that's the key, that's the essence of the bias variance trade-off in ridge regression under multicollinearity. And that is exactly why we have to optimize the K parameter to address the bias variance trade-off. But for now, we just conceptually studying how the coefficients might be different for a value of k equal to 0 0.5. And now, having uh, inverted our adjusted matrix for the ridge regression, we can proceed to a familiar bit. After we have inverted it, we multiply it on the right by transposed x once again. No need to add anything here. And finally, this whole matrix multiplication result is being multiplied on the right by the vector of dependent variables, which is our case is real GDP, our Y over here. And finally, we can calculate our coefficients by using shift control enter. And we'll see that our coefficients are quite similar to the ones we have obtained using OLS. The constant is uh, notably lower, and these parameters are also slightly different which reflects the fact that those are biased. But to figure out what happens to the variance of these coefficients, we have to figure out the covariance matrix of the ridge regression. And to do that, just as with the uh, OLS regression, we have to first estimate the standard error of the model of the regression equation. So here we can input the predicted values of uh, logarithm of the real GDP as uh, a function of our uh, data and our ridge regression parameters. So here we can simply mult our variables, our constant plus the two independent variables onto the ridge regression coefficients over here and we'll lock the rows here and enforce it using shift control enter. We see that for k equals 0 0.5 the uh, predicted results are not um, notably different to the ones uh, given by OLS you can see some uh, differences in terms of uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 difference over here. And that would translate into a difference in residuals and the difference in terms of the standard error of the model overall. So the residual of the uh, ridge regression would be uh, real GDP that we've got over here minus the ridge regression estimated uh, value of log real GDP. And we can enforce it throughout the whole sample and see that residuals are quite similar as well. And now we can calculate the error, the standard error of our ridge regression by inputting some squared of those errors, divide them by the number of the degrees of freedom, which is equal to the one in the OLS, simply uh, number of observations minus number of parameters. And to get the standard error and not the variance of the model, we we'll take the square root. And that gives us 0 0.3902. You see that the variance of the model itself is slightly higher than the variance of the OLS model. But how does it translate into the covariance matrix of the coefficients? Here, the uh, covariance matrix is weighted. And here we see it where the usual uh, matrix multiplication result in the middle that can be directly traced to the OLS covariance matrix is being multiplied on the left and on the right by the Z matrix. And the Z matrix can be expressed in terms of your X and in terms of your K, the uh, parameter over here. So let's calculate the Z matrix over here to simplify our calculations. So first we need to input the identity matrix and we've got it handily over here and subtract K times the inverse matrix, so M inverse, of 
this particular um, input, which goes straight from the estimation of our coefficients. So again, we input the transposed x, input the non-transposed x to the right, and multiply the two together. And then, as per the formula, add k times the orthogonal identity matrix. And that, if we use shift control enter here, would give us the Z matrix. Z matrix is equal to the uh, identity matrix for k equals zero, quite uh, intuitively here, and uh, it would be uh, generalized to the covariance of the uh, OLS estimator for k equals zero. So basically, here we can see quite straightforwardly that ridge regression is indeed a generalization of a simple OLS regression. For k equals zero, the ridge regression is equivalent to OLS, to baseline OLS. And here, finally, having computed the Z matrix, we can use this matrix multiplication formula to retrieve the covariance matrix for the ridge regression. So over here, we can uh, select a three by three matrix as we've got three parameters, and we will have the variances of those estimators on the diagonal, just as usual, and other uh, entries of the matrix will tell us the covariances between those estimators. So let's input the error of the model squared times the matrix multiplication result of the Z matrix and the matrix multiplication result of the transposed X and X on the right hand side that also needs to be inverted. And finally, we need to multiply all of that on the right hand side by Z transposed. So M mult, and on the right hand side, we input transpose Z, which we've got handily over here. And this matrix can be enforced using Shift Control Enter. And we see that it is resembling, in terms of magnitudes, the OLS covariance matrix, but notably the variances on the diagonal are lower than the one provided by the OLS covariance matrix, which represents the bias variance trade-off. Your coefficients would be different, meaning biased, but they would be estimated with lower variance, which is crucial for estimating a regression under multicollinearity or non-orthogonality. So standard errors are again square roots of the diagonal elements, And for hypothesis testing, we can resort to a conventional a set of t-tests, dividing the coefficients by the respective standard errors, and retrieving p-values using a two-tailed t-distribution with the absolute value of t-stats and the degrees of freedom parameter reported over there. And we see that for k equals 0 0.5, our uh, results are statistically significant to a greater extent, meaning that we have reduced the noise in the estimators that could have been associated with uh, non-orthogonality of our independent variables. However, our k here was just a random uh, value that we've taken. How to optimize the value of k? Well, it turns out that Hall, Kennard, and Baldwin in 1975 have proposed a technique to determine it. And there are many techniques that one could use to determine the optimal value of k. However, this one is the most computationally simple of them all. It involves inputting um, this particular ratio as the optimal value of k. So we input the number of variables in our model, which is 3. We multiply it by the variance of the OLS model, which is over here, error squared. And then we have to divide by the scalar multiplication result of the initial um, OLS coefficients. So basically, it would be a sum squared of those coefficients. So we can input sum squared of OLS coefficients. And as our result, we get 0 0.4179. And that could be tracked back here as our optimal k value. And we would see how the 
uh, ridge regression works with k parameter optimized using the Hoyle candidate Baldwin technique. We can see that our constant is notably reduced and its variance have decreased quite a bit. And the same is true for the variances of uh, two other independent variables. And in terms of our coefficients, the population coefficient, which is the elasticity of GDP uh, by labor, is reduced slightly, whereas the importance of capital stock, the importance of capital in our production function is increased. Additionally, we could also see that indeed for k equals zero, our ridge regression is equivalent throughout to the OLS regression, which is again a good sanity check when coding or inputting a ridge regression model yourself in Excel. And alternatively, we could also look at how parameters behave uh, subject to different values of parameters k. Here we can see that as k grows from 0 to 2, the constant is decreasing while the capital stock coefficient is steadily increasing, whereas the population coefficient is decreasing to some extent as well. This is a procedure that was proposed by Holland and Hennett, uh, initially in the 1970 paper, where they suggested that a researcher should look at a wide range of different k parameters, positive k parameters, to see how the uh, regression results, how the estimators change, so that it can be implemented as an additional robustness check. If your results cease to be significant at some value uh, of k, which is reasonably small, then it can serve as an alarming sign for the robustness of your model results. However, later on, the econometric tradition has kind of evolved towards uh, optimizing k using one of the techniques proposed later, for example, Hoyle, Kennedy, and Baldwin 1975 technique we have implemented over here. And this approach is applicable well beyond economics cases. For example, here we have got a finance-related regression where we try to relate the return of ExxonMobil to the return of the market, the S&P 500, and Brent crude. And obviously you can expect that market and oil are indeed correlated, so that could uh, impact the robustness of the results in terms of multicollinearity and variance inflation and uh, the noisiness of the estimators. So, um, utilizing the same concept, we can see that actually the impact of multicollinearity on the data is quite small, and the estimators do not change much after the optimal k as per the ridge regression is implemented. So, overall, ridge regression is a very flexible, a very intuitive technique that can be applied as a robustness check for multicollinearity, and it can be also applied as a robust regression technique when multicollinearity is detected. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any further suggestions in videos for business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.